You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com, and please do uh, subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Uh, if you're at uh, watching over on YouTube, there's a link to subscribe up above this video, or if you want to uh, subscribe and download uh, uh, whatever choice of formats you want using your podcatcher of choice, uh, just visit us online at quicksurf.com. And in the show notes for every episode, I have a, uh, a little subscribe heading, and you can uh, subscribe to just an MP3 feed, an Og Vorbis feed. Uh, if you're on Android or on Linux, the Og Vorbis feed is pretty popular for those platforms. Also, uh, you can subscribe to a standard definition H.264 feed that uh, plays on a variety of uh, popular uh, video playing platforms as well as an HD uh, H.264 feed which plays on uh, those platforms that support high def. At any rate, uh, do feel free to uh, subscribe to the show and uh, check out the other tech podcasts. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at smartcompany.com.au, Android could soon run Windows apps thanks to Wine for Android. This is a pretty interesting uh, development. Codeweaver's developer, Alexandra Juilliard, responsible for the Wine software project that allows Windows to run on other operating systems, including OS X and Linux, has demonstrated how Wine could be ported to Android. So this is, uh, he did this during a FOSDEM talk in Brussels. Uh, he just, basically he demonstrated a prototype version of Wine running on Android. This is uh, pretty nice, um, you know, by all means, uh, definitely uh, something that, uh, you know, could use some support. So uh, you check it out. And if you're in a position to help them out, you know, get right, get right to it. From Muckedware, Hewlett Packard starts selling Google Chromebook. Is the year of the desktop Linux here? I don't know. Are they? It's kind of nice. Hewlett Packard selling Google Chromebooks. So they've uh, Chrome. They Hewlett Packard has joined the Chromebook bandwagon. They've announced their first Chromebook. So um, be interesting to see what comes of it. It's uh, got a 1.1 gigahertz Intel Celeron 847 processor, two gigs of RAM, which can be upgraded to four gigs if you really need it. And a 16 gigabyte SATA SSD for local storage and Intel HD graphics. So not particularly fast. I certainly wouldn't use it for for games. This, you know, I would use something like this. Excuse me, um, purely as a productivity tool, if you will. But uh, still, pretty neat. Um, you know, definitely something if you're in the market for a Chromebook, check it out. From Datamation, Ubuntu, what they're doing right and wrong. Uh, this is basically uh, an editorial on uh, what Ubuntu uh, could be doing better and what they're doing really well. Um, go, you know, the the author of the post here goes through and lists. It's a it's a nice two page article. Um, basically, goes through and lists a whole bunch of you know, basically you know, a nice rundown of Ubuntu. I thought it was an interesting read, so check it out. From uh, manilastandardtoday.com, there's a uh, a blog post by Chin Wong um, called Living with Unity. And uh, the Unity he talks about is in reference to uh, Ubuntu's excuse me, Ubuntu's Unity interface. And um, it, you know, we're all familiar with Ubuntu's Unity interface. You know, uh, there's there's actually a fair amount of controversy around it. And so he's got a little update. He starts off his blog post, much to my surprise, and I'm quoting him here, I'm beginning to like the Unity interface on Ubuntu, the popular Linux-based operating system that's running on my desktop computer. 
Unity, which hardwires its launcher of frequently used programs to the left edge of the screen, drew a lot of flack when it replaced GNOME as the default desktop interface in Ubuntu two years ago. Longtime users complained about the lack of flexibility to position the dock wherever they wanted and the loss of the GNOME panels that acted like launchers, too. Like many such users at the time, I avoided Unity altogether by installing alternative desktop interfaces such as XFCE, LXDE, and Cinnamon and tweaking them to work the way I wanted. All that changed when I upgraded to Ubuntu 12.10 late last year and decided to give Unity another chance. Three things worked in Unity's favor. So uh, he goes through to list uh, basically what changed for him. Um, you know, these are all valid things. You know, the first one, Ubuntu, you know, Unity has improved dramatically. You can never expect a first cut of any software to be awesome. Uh, since it was first introduced in 2010, um, a lot more utilities to allow you to tweak unity, which is good. And, you know, the third thing, which for me is huge, he got lazy, you know, installing and customizing an alternative desktop environment takes time and effort. And quite frankly, that's something that I I'm, you know, incredibly short on time. And if something is too much effort, I'm just not interested because effort equals time and I'm already short on time. So, uh, you know, I, you know, the, a lot of the reasons why I do what I do and I use the operating systems that I use and I have the, you know, workflows that I have is, is literally, I don't have enough time to do anything else. And I have a sufficient workflow that works for my needs you know, and so changing from that is a you know fairly expensive proposition. And so for him, Unity was actually easier for him to just get used to using Unity than it was to go through all of the time and effort to customize your own desktop. You know, that's just how it is. The <laughs> that's just how it is. From a hot hardware, Linux Foundation's UEFI pre bootloader has been rewritten to support all bootloaders. This is kind of neat. Uh, the Linux Foundation announced when they announced that they were creating their own UEFI boot solution, it seemed that our woes about not being able to install Linux on secure boot systems would soon be coming to an end. While the pre-bootloader is still not production ready, it's been readily worked on and recently experienced some significant changes. So kind of nice. Uh, definitely uh, check it out. Give this project some, some support. We definitely need... Um, you know, a, a, a good way to boot Linux or really any operating system besides Windows on a Windows 8 system that was designed for Windows 8. So definitely uh, something to, to support. From Review Seeker, AccuPOS embraces the Linux platform. Um, AccuPOS uh, POS software, which is point of sale, is already ahead of the game. Gone are the days of inaccessibility and clandestine operations. The most progressive POS software is now available on the Linux operating system. Pretty interesting. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is a, uh, basically it's a press release, so definitely check it out. From Melodica.net, Cavium announces carrier grade enterprise quality commercial software development environment for all Octeon processors. The software development kit three provides a fully integrated carrier grade quality Linux 3.x distribution and bare metal software capabilities that can take advantage of the wide range of hardware accelerators included in Octeon processors. So uh, the Octeon family is the industry's leading embedded multi-core processor line designed into enterprise data center and service provider equipment, which is uh, routers, switches, appliances, LTE base stations, et cetera, et cetera. Definitely, if you're uh, in the market for something like that, check it out. From internetnews.com, Linux Foundation gets growth. The Linux Foundation continu continues to amaze me as it never ceases to stop adding new members to its roster. So this week they have uh, added Perforce uh, has joined, which is a, no, um, a point of interest for a number of reasons. Uh, Perforce builds enterprise-grade Git version management software solutions via the Git Fusion solution. Um which is kind of neat. So definitely uh, check that out. Give them some support. 
That'll do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything I've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Just to visit us online, quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.